Well, you shouldn't need much encouragement this morning, so we're just going to do this right off the bat. Good morning. Good morning. We're not even going to do that twice. That was magnificent. God bless you all. And it is a good morning. Furthermore, I will correct Brother Stephen about the drizzle out there. We're not shoveling it. That's a good morning. There's no doubt about that. Timmins is shoveling, all right? It's a good morning because what do sprinters eat before they race? Nothing. They fast. <laughs> Thursday night, 175 of us, brothers and sisters in Christ, fasted that day, pulled the weeds, celebrated the harvest. It was great, guys. Thank you. <laughs> when does a dad joke become a dad joke? When it becomes apparent. That was for Luke, all right? Now you say, how does that fit? Well, Luke said to me, God bless them all, brothers and sisters in Christ. The love of God is here today. But if they really want to bring glory to God, for all of those that are men in the congregation today, don't only just speak the blessing to Luke in the courtyard and to Dave, by the way, but sign up for that men's conference, that retreat on October 28th, I think it is, Dave. It's right in this church. And Luke and Dave are the leaders of that conference for our church family, and they need a few more of us to sign up for that. So October 28th, let's all be a parent that is in the mail tents, that is a dad joke that will support Luke and Dave. God bless us all for that. And it is a good morning because I got to tell you, Pastor Sean comes up with just wonderful, wonderful sermon themes, and I think we can all agree the Psalms of Summer was just knocked her out of the park, and I hope we've all been following what wisdom, and in fact, today, I don't know if I'm the cleanup guy, Sean, or not, but we're going to talk about the wisdom of the Word, and I very much was inspired with this. Uh, yesterday, before I always come on Sunday, I try to drop into my inspiration, which is our matriarch and one of my best friends, Jean Mahood. And I said, Jean, this is the easiest sermon I ever wrote in my life. And she said, it better be good. So I, <laughs> I hope I live up to that expectation. So let's uh, pray. Oh, Lord, may the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So when I was a little boy, and I was playing ball hockey in our back alley with my buddies, uh, my mother would yell, Jerry Jr., time for dinner. Now, I would hear her, but I would not listen to her, all right? I knew there was a time of grace for one more legendary Bobby Hall slap shot for one more for all less Sudbarians to do that Eddie Shack shout, clear the track, here comes Shack. Well, some wannabe goalie that was a Johnny Bauer or a Jock Plant would stop that muddy tennis ball. <laughs> then my mother would yell again, Jerry Jr., a time for dinner. And then we decided that again we would hear but not listen, and we knew we could declare sudden death. The next goal would win the game. And then the voice said, Jerry Jr., it's time for dinner. Get in here. I'm not going to say it again. And then I not only heard my mother, but I listened to my mother. I suggest to you today that we hear a lot of words in our collective lives. But the challenge of this sermon and the challenge from the book of Proverbs because Sean said, Jerry, we're going to do that series on wisdom, and I want us to find that wisdom in the book of Ecclesiastes or in the book of Proverbs. Well, I chose Proverbs. And in the book of Proverbs, we, we very much know that sometimes we have my ball hockey hearing, all right? That, that we hear things, but we don't necessarily listen to things. But what about in our daily lives? The many issues of sad and bad news. This morning, as I listened to my newscast, I heard about all the terrible things that are happening in the Ukraine. Uh, I heard about the shortage of food supply, because today is World Food Day, by the way. It's a day we have to focus on the fact that you and I might have a lot of food, but maybe we should share some of that food. But likely, I'm going to have a pretty decent lunch. 
uh, today. I'm going to hear about some droughts and famines. I'm going to hear about Haiti is in total chaos. And that's a place that Curtis Belcher and I, a few years ago, uh, built an orphanage and a hospital down there. And it just looks like total hell down there today when I saw those television pictures. But, but you know, I'm going to eat that lunch quite well. And I hope that we'll all stand by that door and have a good fellowship. And I hear all of that happening, but am I listening to what's happening in the world that I live in? I hear it, but am I listening? How about when we hear the Word of God? Do we hear the Word of God, and are we listening to it? That, that when we leave God's house today, we not only heard the words of Proverbs, but we listened to the words of Proverbs, and somehow that made us wiser because that's the theme of the sermons, wisdom, that today somehow we are wiser because, in fact, we listened to the words. I might suggest that if we listen to the words of God, we will not only become engaged and empowered, but that you and I will become challenged, but more importantly, reinforced as brothers and sisters in Christ to love God with heart, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Listening well helps us speak well. It is the wisdom of the words that will make us better people in relationship to ourselves, listening to ourselves, not just hearing ourselves, listening to others, not just hearing others, but perhaps most importantly, listening to God and not just hearing God. Proverbs 18, verse 15 says, the heart of the discerning acquires knowledge for the ears of the wise to seek it out. Did you listen to that? You, you heard me say it, but did you listen to it? Let's, let's just say it again. The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge for the ears of the wise to seek it out. The wisdom of these words suggests that to obtain knowledge, we require two things. We require the need to have a discerning heart. In every one of our hearts, we need to have a consciousness of need. Now, this is getting pretty lectury, isn't it, Steve? You kind of say, well, he's now he's lecturing to us. I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out what he's talking about, Cody. Like, hey, what's this discerning heart? That you and I in our hearts have a need to hear the word today. That, in fact, you and I know of that need. In fact, if you came to church today, that you have an opinionated, know-it-all person whose wisdom is conceited, we will not be knowledgeable, and our words will not be wise now, that's a pretty strong statement I just made. If you're a know-it-all, right, and I don't care if you're a know-it-all about Bible study, a know-it-all about prayer, a know-it-all about helping others, a know-it-all about how to solve the world's problems, if you've decided today that you're sitting here today saying, I don't need to listen to the Word, I don't need to listen to Jerry, I don't need to listen to the praise, I don't know about you, that Mason 5, those of us that are old, remember the movie Magnificent Seven? I think we should call those kids Magnificent Mason Five. I don't know about you, but that was pretty magnificent what I heard this morning. Because I heard what they sang, but I listened to his singing. Boy, this sermon starts to make a lot more sense when you start cutting all the dots together, eh? Remember the stupid, silly story that, by the way, is true about the two American football coaches? Their names are Bear Bryant and John McKay. Bear Bryant and John McKay were very successful college football coaches in the United States. And they were great adversaries on the field, but off the field, they were best buddies. And one of the activities they enjoyed doing most was what? Duck hunting. They loved a duck hunt, all right? And they would get up early in the morning, and they'd sit in some swamp in a small boat. Now, Bear Bryant, by the way, was a very boastful guy. He was the guy that's the know-it-all, that's very opinionated. Good old John McKay, he was just that, what, good listener. So, so they're both sitting in the boat, and Bear Bryant's going on and on and on about all the ducks he's ever shot, the hundreds of ducks he's ever shot, how with one shot he can shoot any duck, and on and on and on. That's something you all know as people of faith. I'll remind you this morning, God is always listening to us, all right? He just doesn't hear us. He listens to us. And he was listening to this conversation with these two guys in the boat. And lo and behold, God provided one duck. And the duck started flying through the sky. And Bear Bryant grabbed his gun. He took aim on the duck. He fired. And that duck continued to fly. <laughs> he looked at his friend, John McKay. He says, John, you're witnessing a miracle. There flies the dead duck. Thank you. 
Secondly, and that words from Proverbs, rather than the foolishness of seeing dead ducks fly, we need to seek knowledge with wise ears that are not just hearing but listening to others. The next part of the sermon is really good deliverable, so, so stay with me. The, the great German minister, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, once said, just as the love of God begins with listening to his word, so the beginning of the love for our brothers and sisters is learning to listen to others. So, so you're listening to God, but do we listen to one another? Good listening requires what? Good listening requires patience. You can't be a good listener if you are not patient. And this is the part of the sermon I want you to take home. Bonhoeffer cautions against what he calls half an ear of listening. What a great term, eh? Half an ear of listening. What does he mean by that? He suggests to us a lack of concentration to listen attentively, but rather we're already formulating and our answer or our comments waiting for our turn to talk. I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people that are very much half-ear listeners, all right? Got to be careful. Keep saying that word ear correctly, all right? Half-eared listeners, all right? Uh, the fact of the matter is Proverbs 18, verse 2 says, takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Do, do you know people like that? I, I know people like that, all right? But it even gets worse, all right? You want to do some Bible study in Proverbs? Then let's go to verse 13, and it says, gives an answer before he hears. <laughs> all right, if we're going to have public confession, and I ask you to stand up and say, brothers and sisters in Christ, who is guilty of the sin of talking before you've even listened or heard, and you're formulating your comments because you want to hear yourself talk, you don't want to listen to the other people talk, Who's going to put their hand up first? I am, absolutely. Put your hands up, brothers and sisters, because i got to tell you, I am so guilty of that sin. I'll tell you, I'm just itching in the chair when somebody starts talking. I've got answers for that. There's no doubt about that. Just let me talk. Please, let me talk. I can figure out all the whole thing. doesn't matter what you want to talk about, Stephen. I can figure out the answer. And it was worse when I was young. The younger I was, the more answers I had, all right? I had a giant brain when I was young, all right? I had answers people didn't even have questions for, all right? Oh, I know the answer to that, absolutely. What's your life experience? Well, about 25 years old. Well, I'll correct you, you 75-year-old person that has more life experience than me, because I've got the answers to your questions, all right? Now, I don't know if it's age. I don't know if I've been eating the wrong foods, but i got to tell you, I've got a deteriorating brain, all right? There's no doubt about that. The, the older I get, the less answers I have, all right? It's, it's a sad state of affairs, all right? And, and you know what? If I'm listening really well some days, I'll even ask you to repeat what you're saying because I didn't listen, all right? <laughs> what, what were you trying to tell me, Kathy? All right, well, well gee, that's a really good idea Kathy has. And am I really wise and a really good listener? I might actually be able to say, I'm sorry, I don't know. All right. Now, there's a great confession for everybody. Uh, when's the last time that you actually said to somebody, I don't know? C can you help me? I I'd like to listen to that. Good listening is ministry. There's another deliverable today. Y you say, what's my ministry? Luke had a whole litany of mi ministry stuff, all right? Luke is a light in our church. I love talking to Luke, all right? Because you know why? Because Luke listens, all right? Luke listens to us. He listens to this church. But most of all, what does Stephen say? He listens to God. <laughs> when you're in the middle of a conversation, somebody says, I'll check with God. How, how comfortable are you with that? When's the last time you stopped your conversation and said, i got to listen to God on this conversation to know how I'm going to continue the conversation? That's pretty powerful stuff, all right? That's the ministry of listening. It's a gift you all have. You know what, maybe some of us don't sing so well. I know I can't carry a tune in a suitcase, all right? God bless Sarah and the Mason family and Michelle and everybody you see up here. They got the gift of me. That, that's ministry, ministry music. I, I, was, I was in that little room with Michelle and Gloria and Vicki, and, and they prayed with me before I came in here today. They, they had the ministry of prayer, all right? We, we all have ministries, but all of us have the ability to have the ministry of listening. I have a very good friend, and she has... A really self 
pitied mother. Her mother just whines and wails and look at how terrible my life is. And, and my friend goes and gives her the ministry of listening. And she will sit with this woman for two hours and hear about what a terrible life she has, how everything is against her, how people are not fair to her, how her landlord starts to take advantage of her, and goes on and on and on. And you know what my friend gives her? The ministry of listening. She lets her mother vent all these self-perceived problems and perhaps exaggerated imaginary problems. But my friend does not try to answer the problems. Because she can't. But what she does with her mother is she listens to her mother. She gives her mother the gift of time in listening. How many of us this morning know somebody this week that you and I could give that gift of time with that ministry of listening? And if you think about it, is that not God-like? What does God do for us? He listens to us. We call it prayer, don't we? When we talk to God, we are saying, God, I, I got something to tell you. I hope you are listening. And those of us that are people of faith know that God is listening to everything we say and think and pray. Amen, Amen is right, Cody. There's no doubt about that, my friend. But I might suggest to you that brings me to the next proverb I want to share with you. And that's Proverbs 12, verse 18. There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Boy, the world should really read the book of Proverbs, eh? What did Proverbs just tell us? The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise bring healing. What words are you and I saying? And perhaps more importantly, how are we saying them? What is our tongue saying? Are there words that cut others or words that bring healing of loving and supportive and thoughtfulness? Because Proverbs 13 goes on and puts it this way, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens his lips comes to ruin. Do you know the modern take on this? The modern take in scientific terms is what? The speed of light is faster than the speed of sound. That's why some people look smarter until they speak. <laughs> you just learned the 2022 interpretation of Proverbs, all right? <laughs> Proverbs is saying, slow down, all right? Don't speak until you know what you're speaking about, and then listen to yourself. I suggest to you this morning that the world has 152 principal languages. 152 principal languages. The, the only one I speak, and I speak too fast, and God bless Harry, because every time I preach, he sits in the front row and gets covered in spit, all right? But <laughs> I appreciate his commitment to sit in the front row, all right? And by the way, just for the record, I'm preaching in November a couple times, and we've got a few more seats to fill up here, brothers and sisters in Christ. I want a lot of spit in those front rows, all right? <laughs> so, 152 principal languages. The only one I know is English, talk too fast, spit on people. There's 600,000 words in English, plus another 400,000 technical terms. So if I asked you, friends, take that million-word treasury, and shrink that enormous verbiage down to the five most important words you know. Do you know what they are? Sorry, I made a mistake. Do you know what your four most important words are? What is your opinion? Do you know what your three most important words are? I love you. you know what your two most important words are? Thank you. you know what your most important word is? We. And you know what likely your least important word is I. For I suggest to you that the we's definitely listen better than the I's. And I might ask you this morning, how well are you communicating with the we's in your life? How well do you listen to the people that are sitting with you today and will drive home with you in a few minutes' time? Do you take those people for granted? Are they too familiar to you? All right, interesting little human observation. When this service is over, 
and, and you go to the courtyard, you're going to bump into some people you kind of know. You see them every Sunday. You have a cappuccino with them, have a little visit, and talk about the weather, eh? My goodness, it's starting to rain out there. Falls in the air. Did you see those colors of the trees? Aren't they magnificent? Can't believe the maple leaves won last night. And you'll go on and on and on. <laughs> you're going to miss a visit, all right? And then you're going to get in a car with somebody that you love, and you're not going to talk to them all the way home. Isn't that weird? I think it's weird. All right, I think it's plain weird. And then when you get home, you will talk to somebody when you get home, won't you? Absolutely. Who are you going to talk to? The dog. Absolutely, Kim. <laughs> you got her. You talk to the dog. You've never gone into your house and not talked to your pet, all right? Whether it's a cat, whether it's a fish, whether it's a bird, whether it's a dog, you've always talked to the vet, eh? You all, oh, hi there, Rover, how are you doing? Would, well, would you like a glass of water? Would you, would you like me to pet your ears? Do you, you want to go for a walk, all right? Can you imagine if you did that with somebody you love today, all right? You're going to have a wild afternoon, there's no doubt about that, eh? <laughs> hi, honey, how are you doing? Would you like to have a glass of water? Would you like me to pet you? Would you like to go for a walk, all right? <laughs> are, are you listening to yourself? Do you hear what I'm telling you? Because I've got to tell you, maybe that's why you've got to have an undertaker preach to you every once in a while, all right? Because <laughs> when you come to the funeral home, it's way too late to say, oh, I'd like to go for that walk. I'd like to tell them I love them. I'd like to say a few more thank yous and some my sorries and all those are very important words I'd like them to listen to because I kind of miss the boat sometimes. Today, we all have the capacity and that loving, listening ability. I love the story I'm about to tell you. Brand new story, just for All Nations Church. <laughs> Elderly couple, Fred and Edna. Every year, they go to the country fair. Every year, Fred says to Edna, Edna, I'd like to go on that airplane ride. Every year, Edna says, Fred, it's $10 to go on that ride, and $10 is $10. Every year, they have that same visit. Finally, Fred says to Edna this year, Edna, I'm 75 years old. If we don't go this year, I might never go, and I think we should go this year. And Edna says, Fred, $10 is $10. But the pilot overhears this conversation, and he says to Fred and Edna, I'll tell you what. I'll take you up on the ride free of charge as long as you don't say a word. And if you say a word, you've got to pay the 10 bucks. And Fred and Edna think this is a pretty good deal. And they get in the plane and off they go. And this pilot does everything he can think of. He does twists, he does rolls, he does dives, and not a word, all right? He thinks this is amazing, so he says, I'll do it again. And he does all the twists and the rolls and the dives, and not a word. And he lands, and he looks back at Fred, and he says, by golly, Fred, i got to tell you, all those twists and rolls and dives, I, I thought I could make you yell out something. And Fred said, well... I, I thought I should say something when Edna fell out of the plane. <laughs> but you know, $10 is $10. <laughs> In wisdom, use your tongue for good, all right? Don't let Edna fall out of the plane, all right? understand to be careful not to use thrustful words that cut like a sword, but rather use your tongue to heal. And by the way, if I can give you any other advice, listen to the words of the people who love you. Don't take that for granted. I just preached about that a few minutes ago. But the trouble is so often we get consumed with the detractors. <laughs> we, we say, oh yeah, yeah you, you say I love you, but boy, you should have heard what they said about me at work, I'll tell you. I, I got a guy that would, you know, this woman at work, if she had a broom, she could fly around the office, all right? I, 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 and, you're, and you're listening to that person, all right? You're, you're just absurd, you're obsessed with this person who's going to say bad things about you. But, but the people that love you, that care about you, that respect you, that want to work with you, you take them for granted, you're not listening, but you hear them. Don't listen to the distractors. Don't suck up your oxygen with people who do not appreciate who you are. This is not a sermon example. It's what I talk to my friends in the community. I tell my community friends, if you go to a meeting and you get into that meeting and everybody's fighting and bickering and being critical and it's just overwhelming negativity, 
I want you to look around that room. And if you cannot find anybody in that room that could be a pallbearer for you, get out of that room, all right? Because there's nobody there that cares about you. And if you're going to spend your time listening to people that are distractors, then that is very inappropriate. Listen to the people that love you. And this sentence I am going to read because I don't want to mess it up. Because the negative voices are not loving, they are not caring, they are not sharing. This is the sentence, and if you're listening on the radio or whatever we're doing on streaming, this is a sentence I want all of us to take home. Those negative people, they are soul-sucking, emotionally exhausting, and hurtful to our hearts. Have the wisdom of the word to not only just walk away, run away from those situations. There's a wonderful modern parable about an elderly grandfather and his son. And the boy is riding on the the, the, the elderly grandfather is riding on the donkey, and the boy is holding the halter, and they're walking to a big city. They're walking to the big city to actually sell the donkey at the market because the boy is an orphan, and the grandfather's raising him. So, so as they go through this one village, the people in the village say, look at that old man. He, he's riding on that donkey, and that little boy has to walk. Boy, if child services could only see this, they'd certainly fix that, all right? And the grandfather hears this. Well, that, that's terrible. I'll get off the donkey, and I'll put my grandson on the donkey. They won't criticize me then. And so they go to the next village, and the people in that village say, look at that. Look at that, making that old man walk beside that donkey, all right? People don't respect their elders anymore. What kind of kid is that letting his old grandfather walk while he rides the donkey? So the grandfather heard that. He thought, well, we should fix that. So you know what they did? They both got on the donkey, all right? And they went to the next village. And you know the next village was even more critical. You know what they yelled out? Look at that animal abuse, all right? If the Humane Society could only see those two guys riding on that donkey, I'll tell you, they'd arrest them. And you know how this little story ends? The grandfather and the grandson carry the donkey to the market. <laughs> the moral of that modern-day parable is don't listen to others. Who are you supposed to listen to? Pretty obvious. Luke listens to him all the time. God. G God is speaking to you about how you should walk in life. Whether you're on the donkey or off the donkey, whether you're together or not, listen to God because he, in fact, has the understanding of how you should walk in faith. And in faith, you never have to apologize. In faith, you're never distracted. In faith, you're never confused. I suggest to you today that it is most important as people of faith we walk well. Which brings me to perhaps one of my final Proverbs about listening and speaking to God. Proverbs 2 verse 6 says, For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, comes knowledge and understanding. What did he say? Proverbs 2 verse 6. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, comes knowledge and understanding. You and I do what? You and I know the written word. You and I know that word in prayer. We know that word in praise. But I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel that when I'm talking to God, and I know he's listening, but somehow that's a monologue. Somehow when I pray, sometimes when I pray, sometimes when I preach, I'm quite convinced I'm speaking, but, but it's not a divine dialogue. It's a monologue. Okay, do you have that sense of engagement when you pray, when you speak to God? Do you feel God's talking to you? When, when Stephen prayed, did you hear God talking to you? We were praying to God. Was it a dialogue or a monologue? And I tell you this, I know when it was a dialogue all the time. All right? It was when I was able to escape from these sermons and go to Sunday school, all right? When I was a little guy, I had that little voice inside me. And that little voice inside me talked to me all the time. That little voice told me right from wrong, good from bad. I, I never had to read somebody's CV, all right? I, I know that as soon as I met them when I was five years old, I liked this. This is a good guy because that little voice kept talking to me. But as I got older, I didn't listen to the little voice, did I? 
In fact, I didn't like listening to the little voice. In fact, I wanted to be deaf from the little voice. And it's funny, I let other voices listen to. Okay, voices of what? Ambition? Voices of coveting? Voices of greed? Voices of a need to be acknowledged and popularity? Those voices distorted the little voice that I tell you this morning is God's voice in every one of us. And if you listen to that voice, you're not going to go too far wrong with regard to where you're headed. But the evil one, that evil one, that evil one really likes to mess up your voice. That evil one wants you to say, yeah, that, that's the wrong voice, Ray. Don't, don't listen to my voice, all right? What, what does that little evil one say? You don't need to go to church. <laughs> that doesn't make any difference if you go to church. You, you don't need to send your grandchildren or your children to Sunday school. D- doesn't make any difference. You know what? You can't make a difference in this life with your light. No big deal. You know, God, I don't know what this God thing is. God doesn't hear your prayers. That evil one wants to distort that voice. That evil one wants you to be deaf to the listening of God speaking to you this morning. And when you leave this place, make sure that you do not have static in that communication with God's voice in you. The word of God tells us that you and I were created in his image. The word of God tells us that you and I are his children by being descendants of Abraham. The word of God tells you and I we are brothers and sisters in Christ because he died on a cross for our sins. So do not be foolish. Do not be foolish as the man who said, God speak to me, and a metal lark sang. So the man yelled, God speak to me, and thunder rolled over the sky. But the man did not listen. The man looked around and said, God, let me see. And a star shined brightly. And then the man shouted, God, show me a miracle. And a life was born, but the man did not notice. So the man cried out in despair, Touch me, God, and let me know that you are here. Whereupon God reached down and touched the man. But the man brushed the butterfly away and walked on. Know, know that God is with us right now as we sit in his presence. Feel the spirit and the fire of the Holy Comforter. As we pray and praise, know the words that are said regularly across North America and the world, words that are not just to be heard but to be listened, words I hope you say and listen as you are saying them. And it's a very brief prayer, is it not? And you know the words. And those of you that don't know the words, think about them, listen to them, and if you're prepared to say them, say them with passion. Save them with the relationship and fellowship of this church family. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I will make you my Lord and Savior, knowing that God is listening and loving us with his blessing as we say, Amen, which means, so be it. And brothers and sisters in Christ, that is truly the wisdom of the word, and the touch of the butterfly. Amen.